Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. This video is very different from what I usually do. I usually code and uh, talk about machine learning projects. But here in this video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to build a better machine learning or data science project for your portfolio. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do it now. In the last talks, which is a series on my uh, YouTube channel, we had Vladimir Glovikov and he talked about a project that you maybe you have seen demos of it or videos of it uh, floating around or on LinkedIn or Twitter by multiple persons. So the project was about detecting masked faces in the pandemic world. And this is this is like uh, um, if you have seen the, the videos, you would think like this is a simple project, but it's not. And he shared it in such a way which was like super interesting and amazing. And I have I haven't seen it being shared in that way. Uh, so in case you missed it, take a look at the video. He also shared a bunch of tips on how to get started uh, with uh, your data science, building your data science portfolio. So inspired by that video and adding my own goodness on top of it, I'm sharing a bunch of tips that I think will be useful for you to build a better good looking uh, data science portfolio or machine learning, building machine learning projects. The first thing is about choosing the right project. So choose something that excites you. Choose something that encourages you to work hard. Do something that you think would be helpful for others and choose something that you think you will be able to do in a much better manner than others. So uh, it doesn't have to be an entirely new project or something very innovative. It can be something very simple. So a lot of people, when they start with machine learning or data science projects, they start with the Titanic data set. So think about Titanic data set. Is there something that you can do there to make it uh, useful? So it should not be like using random forest to achieve 1.0 accuracy by overfitting the test data. No, not like that. Is there something that you can build on top of a Titanic data set that you think the community will spend time on? If you think you can, then go ahead. In the end, it's all about execution. So it's not about how difficult or how easy your project is. It's about how you have executed it. And that's very important. The next thing that we have is experiments. So experiment, experiment, and experiment. Yes, you need to perform a lot of different kinds of experiments. Would you like to publish something which has an accuracy of 75% uh, or would you like to publish the same thing with an accuracy of 80% or 85%? So if I'm looking at your code and you've, you've done something and gives you accuracy of 85, 75% and uh, someone, someone else has uh, done something similar with a much higher accuracy, who am I going to choose if I, if I start building something on top of it? So what is it? You have to figure out what is the cost associated with uh, taking the accuracy from 75% to 85%. So that can only be done by making a lot of experiments, keeping track of these experiments and not rushing. So do not rush. So make your experiments is going to take some time, but that's how it is. And um, try to understand the data and the problem itself and uh, think what you can do so that it doesn't fail in many situations so that it's kind of foolproof. It won't be, but you have to think like that. And uh, you have to present it in a way better than others. And that can only be done by doing uh, hundreds of experiments. So now you have uh, you have been performing a lot of experiments and while performing experiments is also very necessary to write good code since you would like to uh, like the world to use your uh, data science or machine learning project it's very important that the code should be readable and uh, well documented right so this will enable others to fork your project and build something on top of it but if you're if you're like uh, very lazy and you're, you're writing very bad code, I, I don't think anybody is going to try to uh, take up something from there. Until unless I, I, it's very something very revolutionary, right? 
So you should follow a coding standard. You can use tools like Flake 8, uh, PyLint to help you uh, with uh, um, uh, writing better code. And you can also use a code formatter like Black. I've introduced Black in one of my tips and tricks videos. So you can take a look. It's super amazing and I love it. Uh, so you need to remember that your project needs to go that extra mile because it has to be used by others so you have to you have to go that extra mile use modules to make it look good and use jupyter notebook only for showing the demos so if you're using jupyter notebooks they must import from your project and not like i i don't want i don't want to open a jupyter notebook which has like thousands of cells and um hundreds of thousands lines of code right so if you do that you will be building a very good data science project and most public notebooks that i see on uh, maybe on kaggle or google collab or wherever on github so these uh, make you fall asleep it's because there's this a lot of things in these notebooks which are not required they can be well imported from other uh, from from your own project like if you have done it in a modular way so you just import it from there and then use it in a notebook and it's so, so super simple and easy and uh, also good on eyes <laughs> and doesn't make you fall asleep so now you have done um, a good and understandable code and you have chosen a project you have you have good and understandable code now now it's time to share the project with others so share your code with a good documentation so uh, when you think your code base is in good state you can share it now you can you can publish your code on github for example but before you publish on your code on github make a good readme and if you don't know what readme is go take a look right now readme is uh, something that when, whenever some someone opens your github repository the first thing that they see is the readme and your readme should consist of things like uh, uh, what this project is about how to run it how to run the project how how is it different from other similar projects and what what makes it makes your project more interesting so all these questions can be answered by readme and they can be answered in uh, a direct manner they can be answered indirectly so people are not going to look at your code and engage if they don't know what the project is about so they have to know what the project is about another thing that you should consider while creating github repository is a license so uh, you you do you want your code code to be used by others then think about, about the license because most of the time people are not going to use your code if they if it doesn't have a license associated with it and the license is very really very important and license of the project like you have different licenses like apache uh, mit license uh, bsd you have gpl license and licenses depend on uh, what kind of libraries you have used for your project so it depends on the license of those libraries so uh, take some time and uh, see what kind of license suits your project and uh, you must add a license to your project and when you add a license you enable others to use it otherwise maybe if your project is interesting maybe people will contact you uh, to add a license to your project but if you don't add a license um, but if you add a license then people won't con won't contact you and they will use it directly so once you're done with all this, the next step is sharing. Uh, next step is packaging the project. <clears throat> so now you have shared your code and it has a good documentation. Next step is packaging. Next step is shipping. And in shipping um, in uh, Python world is packaging the project and making it available on pip. So package your project. So package your project and publish it on PYPI. So so that if, if somebody has to uh, use your project, they can just pip install it. So many projects cannot be packaged and that's perfectly fine. If you think that your project cannot be packaged and it cannot be published on pip, that's okay. Just learn it. And uh, don't just do uh, this publishing thing, packaging thing just for the sake of it. Because if, if it cannot be packaged, don't do it. Um, learning how to pack, package your project is one thing, but overdoing it is another. And when you package your project, you, you must always remember that uh, you, you should have uh, good automation. 
So if I pip install your project and if I want to run it, I, I don't want to run 10 more steps after pip install, right? If I have to do that, I, I would not, uh, I would not uh, use your package. Maybe I will use something else. So you need to take care of automation too. And uh, one example I will give you, like uh, if your project is uh, um, has, like if you have created a, a deep learning model to detect faces, let's say, and now, now some, someone is using your package and uh, they call a function to detect faces and it downloads some weight. So you, you can add this, like you, you don't, person doesn't have to download the weights manually. It can be downloaded on, on its own when the function is called for the first time and it can be cached so that it can be used over and over again and uh, it doesn't have to download um, every time the function is called. So that's what makes your uh, Python package more interesting and uh, useful. Now you have come <laughs> very far. Now it's time to make a good looking web application. You have worked quite a lot. You've worked hard on your code and not just that you have also like packaged it. So now it's time that you uh, use the package that you have created and create a web application from it. So it must it must come from your Python project. It should not be like another application. So most of the times the recruiters or managers, they, they don't want to look at the code. So they, they would probably read about your project or if you have shared it somewhere, they will read about it and then they want to see it in action and seeing something in action is much better than just reading the code and trying to use it. So I would like to see some project in action first, then I would try to see, okay, now maybe, maybe I can use it for uh, what I'm doing. So you can choose any kind of framework you want. You can try to make it super simple or super complicated web, web appli applications. So you can use Streamlit, Dash, uh, Flask, Jinja2, whatever, really. And as a data scientist, you are not a front-end developer but you can you have to try to go that extra mile to learn some something new and if you are learning some css or html while doing it's like cherry on top isn't it you can also use it at your work so if you if at work you're building something some algorithms maybe maybe you can try to show it using a web application and it's much more interesting so this approach is also going to help you when you're presenting your work in a company. Most managers won't care about uh, complicated mathematics or your algorithms, right? They would like to see uh, your stuff in action. And I'm pretty sure like when, when people see it, they uh, would go faster about uh, like deploying it uh, in production. So that's very useful in uh, work too. Now let's say you have built a model or project uh, which uh, is used for uh, detecting image of uh, detecting like faces of people in uh, image right so where is the demo make a short video i have to make a short video you, you maybe make a short video from your web application you can make a short video uh demonstrating like it must be connected to your web application and your project right so demonstrate it and i remember that if i have to reproduce it i must be able to reproduce it just by looking at your Git github repository so I look at your readme and I must be able to reproduce that demo of yours. If I can do that, that's super awesome, right? So many times uh, a project that cannot be uh, demoed in a video, right? There are many projects which you cannot demo th them in, in a video and don't, don't worry about it. But if you cannot make a short video uh, demoing your web application or your project, so you can, you can always make a short video explaining the different parts of your project and how it's useful. So demos always help, but don't try to do the same demos like others. So think outside the box, be innovative. And uh, as I've already said, the project is not about if the project has been done before or not. It's all about execution. You just need to do it better than others. And when you have everything in place, uh, write a blog post. So write an article describing what you have done. So uh, these days people write a lot of uh, blog posts and articles about machine learning and data science, but uh, most of the articles are not very good. Um, and it shows a lot of desperation. 90% of uh, the content in an article is not even related to the title. 
So let's say you have you have done a project of, about semantic similarity using BERT. I don't want to read the history and geography of BERT, what BERT is, how BERT works, because if I don't know that, I won't come to your article. Uh, I already know the background of BERT. Now I want to see it in action and see what you have done. You have done about something about semantic similarity. I want to see that. And um, try to talk about only what you have done by giving a small little introduction. That's it. Uh, but don't don't describe your uh, project using stories and that's just a big no-no at least from my side and uh, keep these things in mind when you're writing your next blog post for your uh, project or like in general um, that your it's not like only 10% of your content should be relevant to the title or should do justice to the title I think all of your content must do justice to the title 90-95% of it and if you do it that, that way uh, your blog post is also going to be quite famous and for writing blog posts you can use any kind of platform you want so don't care about platform much you can use github io free pages as long as if your content is good traffic will come that's how it works and uh, in the end, when you have everything in place, uh, you can share your project by uh, like uh, on LinkedIn or on Twitter. So instead of tagging millions of people, people, what you can do is you can use hashtags, right? And um, write the post in a very interesting manner and there will be engagement. Uh, post your demos, there will be engagement. So you don't need to tag thousands of people there. And you can also write a message to experts, experts that you know, maybe on Twitter, on uh, LinkedIn, and you can ask to get their opinion on what you have done. So don't ask for liking, com commenting and retweeting. Uh, they, they are going to do it anyways. If they find your project to be interesting, they are going to do it. You don't have to ask that. And uh, sharing in proper way is very useful in the long run. And that's all my friends. That's all you need to do. It might look very difficult in the in the beginning. So in the beginning, you will feel like there are so many things that you have to do for one single project. Yes, you have to do all these things if you want to present it in a good way. And after after sec after first time, I was like second time, third time, this, this thing, thing, things will become much easier. You will know how to present each and every project of yours in your portfolio. Maybe you don't even need like 10 different projects. Maybe you just need a couple of projects, but done in a good way, in a, presented in a good manner. That's all you need. It, and with, with the next projects, you will be able to tick off the check boxes very fast and you will also improve on your workflow. So go ahead and give this a try and let me know uh, if it works for you. Oh, there's this one more thing I almost forgot and like and subscribe and share my video if you like it. Then see you next time. Goodbye.